Hello, this is Jim Whitehead of All Power Group. My channel has evolved over the last year, and I appreciate your support. It is described many times by those who know YouTube much better than I do that you need to find a niche. And I know a lot of times people go, find a niche. That's good. But there are only so many things in the world that people are interested in. <laughs> Some things they're not. So you got to be careful to choose something that fits the channel. We, I grew up in an animal household. My mother was just like me or I'm just like her in that there is no animal that you don't love. Whether it's a bird, a dog, a cat, a reptile, uh, you name it. When I was a kid, we were the neighbor that when, let's say, a bird fell out of a tree, a baby bird, we would be the home that folks would bring the bird to, and we would try to save them and get them back to the, the, the way they were. But when they fall out of a, a uh, nest, A, it's hard to be feeding in a bird that needs feed feeding from its mother. And, you know, they, they have a very big chance of not making it. So unfortunately, we had a lot of sad situations and a lot of burials through the years. But we felt that we were doing our best. Now, getting into the niche, I didn't choose animals just because I thought people would like animals. Some like animals, some don't. Some love animals, some don't. But when you do YouTube for any length of time, you do feel that you wouldn't be happy and you wouldn't enjoy what you're doing if you just was doing something that you thought other people would like. So now let's go and start with talking about some very unique animals that are have had to develop body systems that allow them to live in whatever wild conditions they're in. And we're talking about a lot of different things. Cold, heat, no water, too much water etc., etc. Animals have evolved various fascinating adaptations to survive in extreme conditions that would be inhospitable to humans. We'd like to send some humans into those places, but uh, you know, let's not talk about that. Wildlife ad adapting to harsh environments is a testament to the incredible resilience of nature. With animals developing remarkable strategies such as specialized body structures, unique behaviors, and physiological adaptations to thrive in extreme conditions. In extreme conditions, like deserts, Arctic regions, or deep oceans, animals face specific challenges, such as intense temperature, fluctuations, scarcity of food and water, and high pressure uh, oxygen or lack of oxygen. These harsh environments demand specialized adaptations for survival, including efficient heat and water regulation, insulation against cold and the ability to withstand high pressure of oxygen or low pressure of oxygen levels. Here are some of their survival strategies. One is called camouflage. Many animals use camouflage to blend 
in with their environment, surroundings. Avoiding predators or sneaking up on prey. Examples, you're looking now at the Arctic fox who has fur that changes with the seasons. So in other words, in the, in the winter, they're white. In the summer, they're not white, and they blend in. The next thing we'd like to talk about is the leaf-tailed gecko, which resembles a dead leaf. I'm not sure about that, but, you know, they can blend in. Some trees would certainly have it where no one basically could see them. In some cases, we have hibernation. Some animals like bears, squirrels, undergo a hibernation to survive harsh winters. And now during hibernation, their metabolic rate slows down significantly reducing the need for food and allowing them to conserve energy. Okay, now talking about specialized body features. Animals have evolved specific body features to cope with the environmental surroundings. For example, the Long-legged kangaroo rat, uh, the long legs help it avoid the hot desert ground while the thick blubber of whales insulate in the cold ocean waters. Now, behavioral adaptations. Animals also exhibit behaviors that help them survive. For example, elephants flap their ears to cool down, and some desert animals are nocturnal, meaning that they only come out when it is dark. If they come out in the day, it's too hot. Now, talking about physiological adaptation, some animals have evolved physiologically with mechanisms to cope with extreme conditions. For example, these little tardigrades, for instance, can enter a state of cryptobiosis where their metabolic activity nearly stops, allowing them to survive extreme temperatures and radiation. Now, some animals say, well, you know, my body doesn't really work well, so I'm going to have to move each year. So many species migrate to avoid harsh conditions. Birds, whales, caribou, they travel long distances to find more favorable environments. So in other words, you go, go to Florida in the winter so you don't freeze. Now, one of the most fascinating examples of wildlife adapting to, to survive, survive in a severe environment is the Arctic ice fish. Now, this is amazing. I'm going to be honest. As much as I love animals, I know a certain amount of any, about animals. As I've been on this journey, uh, by the way, I've, I've had a YouTube channel th since 2007, but I just sold my business about a year ago, so now I'm doing content creation full-time. But back in 2007, I really used YouTube because I was a generator company, standby generators, and I would just use that, or YouTube, as an opportunity to say to a customer, okay, you want to know about your generator, or what size, how it works, just go up to my website, and I have two or three or four or five, uh, you know, presentations that will really, really help you 
get to understand, uh, you know, what, how gener generators work, how expensive are they are, they are how, how long it takes them to install. But that was mainly what the channel was. When I started a year ago, when I sold my generator business, I said, you know, I've always wanted to do YouTube full time. So that is what I'm doing now. I'm also selling on eBay. It, you know, it's like, thank goodness, when you get to be a certain age and you're not kind of out there, I hate to say, uh, with dementia or what have you, you have so many skills that you've developed over the years. So what happens at the end of your life, you say, okay, I have lived, I'm 74, by the way, I've lived 74 years. What are the things that I enjoyed doing in those 74 years? Besides when I was a kid and I would play, but as you get older, you kind of start to say, well, I like this, I like that, I don't like this, I don't like that. But being in the creative nature of YouTube makes it where every day you learn new things and you get better, hopefully. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Now, back to the Antarctic ice fish. They have what we call antifreeze proteins. Unlike other fish, the ice fish produce antifreeze, like in a car, proteins in their blood and body fluids. These proteins prevent the formation of ice crystals in their, inside their body, allowing the fish to survive in sub-zero temperatures. They also have a lack of hemoglobin. Now, one would say with adults, children, you have to have hemoglobin to take the oxygen that you breathe in. By the way, we breathe in 21% oxygen. You won't be tested on that. But the point is, what happens with, within the lungs of the human being, you have what we call a blood, a blood barrier. And when you breathe in, and again, you're only breathing 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen and all the rest, little gases in between, the only thing that we can function on or survive on is oxygen. So that's, uh, and what happens, we have home hemoglobin in our red blood cell system, and that hemoglobin, the oxygen goes across the lung barrier into and gets picked up in the bloodstream by hemoglobin. So when you hear that someone's anemic, that means they don't have enough hemoglobin. So what, what will happen is they will be short of breath. And again, I get into these asides. I have to be careful not to go too off on, on tangents. But uh, what happens with these, uh, you know, the, fi uh, the fish in the uh, Ant Antarctica, instead of having he hemoglobin, they have a protein in the red blood cells that carry oxygen. Instead, uh, and what's nice about, uh, we have two steps to get, uh, you know, oxygen into our bloodstream. But these fish have it where that protein in the blood absorb and transport the oxygen directly from the cold water. So the neatest thing in all these respects with these animals is they, they have logical bodies. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't do well in this cold temperature with a, without any freeze blood. And if they had hemoglobin, and they had to first get, get uh, oxygen into the body and then onto the hemoglobin, and the hemoglobin then gets around and gets used. Instead, it says, I'm going to skip a step. I just pull it directly from the water. Now, that is absolutely uh, cool. They have gills that do this, and 
uh, and you've heard that before, but this is, this is the extreme of trying to get oxygen out of a, an extremely tough environment. Cold, cold water. Now, the, uh, not that this means anything, but they have gills that are translucent. Now, they also have increased blood volume. That means the amount of blood. Ice fish have larger blood volume than other fish, which helps them with this oxygen and transportation of the oxygen. And in essence, they have better buoyancy in this dense, cold water, all because of these extra body parts. Now, specialized body st structures, their bodies streamlined. They can contain a low-density li lipid-rich liver, which aids in buoyancy. So now the liver does one thing, but it also helps them float or stay, you know, stable in the water. And it allows them to navigate the deep, cold water more efficiently. Now, the Arctic ice fish uniqueness adaptations to their extreme environment make them one of the most fascinating examples of wildlife surviving and evolving. Now, let's, let's summarize a little bit here. Wildlife across the globe has demonstrated remarkable resilience and ingenuity in adapting to challenging conditions. Animals have evolved various st strategies to survive in extreme environments such as deserts, Arctic region regions, and deep oceans. These adaptations include camouflage, as I said, hibernation, specialized body features like the, the elephants, behavioral changes, physiological mechanisms, and, and migration. If you can't, can't work, you have to move on to the next one. One of the most fascinating examples is, as I said, is the Arctic fish, which has developed the un unique protein antifreeze <laughs> in their uh, bloodstream and hemoglobin, and lack of hemoglobin, I should say, that helps uh, with direct interface to the water system and has it where they can get as much oxygen as they need to live. Now, even the most severe environments showcasing all these animals have resilience and complexity of life on Earth. And this is just so amazing. Now, a little, what I'd say, call to action I would like you, please share your thoughts on the amazing ad adaptation of behaviors in wildlife. This didn't happen by accident, and we don't want to get into who helped them create this, but bottom line, they had it where they went into a, a situation that certainly you and I could not survive, and they adapt and it wouldn't even be where you'd have to say, well, they have to adapt because we need, we need these protein fish in Antarctica. No, it's just as the way of life. And when an animal is, gets into some environment, you know, the uh, changes in, in the environment and they adapt to astounding tough conditions. So if you really ever think, do we have a purpose? Are we here for a reason? We sure are. And thank God for us being here. Now, 
I want to thank you very much. I love this so much. If you followed me a little bit here and there, we moved from Davie, Florida, on the south, south um, east side of Florida, over to the southwest side of Florida in Naples. And we went from a 4,000 square foot home to a 2,000 square foot home. I am now sitting in a building we had to put on the property. And we got it from a company up in Orlando. It's all, you know, uh, hurricane proof and air conditioned and I have plenty of power. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, from the generator side, that's what I had to do for 20 years, make sure people always had their power when, unfortunately, FPL would, would lose theirs. So anyway, I want to thank you very, very much. I hope you've learned something from this. We're not supposed to ask you to subscribe, but I will. And just, you know, if you found this helpful, this is great. And I would really enjoy having you comment, either good or bad. Because, you know, when somebody, and some, some folks are mean, but in all cases, I learn from, I guess you might say, my mistakes. Something that somebody didn't like. Something that's something, something I didn't explain very well. So it, it really is appreciated. Uh, yeah, somebody's saying you're a jerk on, on a comment. That doesn't really help very much. Because I could be a jerk anyway, and I'm not going to probably not be a jerk. Or I'm not a jerk. But bottom line... That doesn't help me. But if they say, Jim, you should have spoken more about this or that, it really makes things better because you have to work every day at trying to make sure everything is the way it should be. So anyway, from, from me, my wife Myra, and Jamie, our nine-year-old little shih tzu, and again, you can find her uh, on my channel. She's been Top Gun. She's been... Uh, Oh, shiny one shot. I can go on and on and on. She would fly, fly planes. She now is the CEO of, of uh, All Power Group, and she keeps me in line. She makes sure I don't make too many mistakes. But anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you doing and being here with me. Please take care, stay well, and try to have fun.